You've been avoiding the biggest risk in crypto. Maybe you're ignoring it on purpose. Maybe you're just saying it's not going to happen to me. I don't know, but you know. Last year, about this time, FTX happened, and it was FTX was run by one of these quote unquote smartest minds in crypto that everybody trusted, everybody believed. Nobody thought they would lose their money due to FTX rug pulling or that Sam was a bad, bad man. That boy's going to jail now. But nobody saw that coming. And that's my point. You're ignoring the risk of trading on centralized exchanges. You don't know who's a good guy, who's a bad guy. You don't know what exchange is crooked. This keys, this keys continues to happen. We had Mt. Gox. We've had other exchanges go down. Stop ignoring it, bro. You got to get to an exchange that is decentralized. On top of that, you should be automated trading because you're using your emotions to chase things or f sell, panic sell. These two things are the biggest risks that you're ignoring. You think that you can trade by hand and you think that using a centralized exchange is okay. Neither of them are okay. But at least get to a decentralized exchange. I found one that I've been using and I'm going to show you here how to get connected to it uh, with the API so you can remove emotions. Go ahead and screenshot this if you are a developer on the left side. We'll go ahead and build this algo out. Let me talk about Hyperliquid for a second. This is one of the best exchanges I've seen in a long time because it's fully decentralized, meaning you can take your money off in no time. There's no waiting period, nothing like that. And then on top of it, they have pretty much every single altcoin that you can imagine. And they launch, whenever a new altcoin starts to trend, they get it on their exchange in no time. And it's decentralized and that's the key. You're not gonna lose your money this way. This allows you to be much much safer sure there could be a black swan but i highly doubt it since these are all this is a decentralized exchange meaning there's no one person that has control of it kind of like ftx did so i want you to avoid getting licked and literally losing 100 percent of your funds simply just follow along in this video i'll show you how to set this up and you can even build trading algos with this so we've gone through this already and by the way if you don't know how to code don't worry about it bro just watch this video i didn't know how to code before either it's not for super smart people or i mean sure smart people can code as well but people just use big words and yada yada and it's really just english so stick around i'll show you how to do it by the way i have a 200 dollars usdc giveaway going on all you have to do is comment below what are you working on and subscribe so we're here at this point and in order to get connected to Hyperliquid, you have to be on Arbitrum. So just Google how to add Arbitrum to MetaMask. It takes two seconds. Shows you exactly how to do that here in this Cointelegraph article. And then you have to get your private key. Don't share this with anybody, nobody. Please don't share it with anybody, not even me, not your friends. I put the private key in here like this. It says key equals this and it's in this don't share config that you see me importing right above it. Don't share with anybody, please, please, please. Be safe out there. And then I'll put all of this code on my GitHub. So, you know, just relax, sit back, relax. You can have all the code, it's all there. Um, Hyperliquid's hard to get onto. So the only way to really get it is through an invite. I have a link below in the description in order to get that invite. Um, they only let like three people use the invite per week. So it is kind of first come, first serve. If it works, it works. There's gonna be a couple hundred people that watch this video though. so. Let's go ahead and show you what we've done thus far. I'm gonna zoom out just so you can have all the code. Take a screenshot because we've been working on this for a while. You can see we can get the ask bid, the ask price, the bid price, and we can get the order book data. So L2 data, pretty amazing. So you just got all that for free, boom. I believe code is a great equalizer. That's why I share all of my code here. Nobody else is ever gonna show this information on YouTube. And on top of that, I give 200 bucks away. <laughs> each month you can see this is how you get your limit orders you you can place an order and i'll go ahead and place an order here on let's go ahead and switch it to injective just because i'm on that page i'll put inj you can see the size here we're just going to put an order in for one 
and then uh, let's just get this order in so you can see how this works. I'm going to deselect this one or select this one. This is a buy order because it says true. I'm going to get the ask and the bid first. You can see here, this gets all of the data that we need, the open, high, low, close volume data. This adjusts the leverage. So let's, let's uh, keep the leverage the same. Uh, this will print out all of the open, high, low, close volume data and the L2 data. Not that we're using it for this. I just want to show you how this works. This should place an order here. Give it a second should print out some data first. Perfect. There's the high, open high, low, there's the L2 data. And then it just placed its order at 16.68 that filled boom. We're in a position just like that. Algorithmically, you don't have to be a coder to do this. You just have to learn how to code. Sorry. That was kind of funny. You don't have to be a coder, but you have to know how to code. I'm not a coder, but I know how to code. I say that much. So now we're in a position here and how do we get out of the position? Well, you just unmark that and mark that out. And now this is a sell order. The only difference is this is false and it's on the ask instead of the bid. I'm actually not going to put the order in yet. I'm gonna wait a little bit. Let's see if we can get a little, a little win, a couple pennies here. Let's put in another uh, buy order actually. No, let's not, let's not start gambling here on video. Let's build something that you can use in order to algo trade. So what do we want to do today? I want to get a couple more functions in here. And if you like this series that I'm making, please do uh, tap the like button. But more importantly, let me know below you want to see more. Let's get some supply and demand zone. Let's get the supply and demand zone. Def. And I'm just trying to give you as much stuff to work with as possible. So you can really just crush it and build whatever you want. I've made so many videos here on YouTube that um you know like if i just give you the tools you can kind of build anything right so that's kind of my goal here so let's go ahead and say print print uh starting moon supply and demand zone calculations Okay. And let's say SD limit equals 96. Let's say SD SMA equals 20. So we'll be using the 20 SMA. Let's say SD DF equals PD dot data frame. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. All right. Just so you can see a little bit better data frame. Okay. And then we're going to say DF equals get open high low close volume and that's a function here so let's actually just copy this over paste it right there and we could just put this let's make this time frame now time frame and then limit up here and i believe i have those already right time frame nope i don't so this time frame is one minute. Let's change this to one hour. And then uh, limit should be, what do we want the limit to be, B? B, what we want the limit to be. Let's just do one thou. All right, okay. You're getting everything. I'm giving you my supply and demand zone algorithm here right now. This is gonna be dope. Let's say sup one hour. So supply one hour equals df.iloc negative one and then we're gonna grab the support because above here we actually put in the support and resistance support resistance okay and then resist resist one hour equals df dot i lock negative one okay and then we'll say resist because we already built that in the above in the above data frame i showed you the data frame briefly And then we can say print F, this is moon support for one hour. And then we'll just say support one hour. This is resist. And then we'll pass in the resistance. Resist one hour. Okay. 
So there we go. Support and resistance. Sweet. Step one. Now step two, we'll say DF supply low equals DF negative two. Say low dot min. Boom. And then we'll say sub low one hour equals DF dot I lock negative one. I love, I love negative one. And then it will be sub low. Sub low. Okay, so what is this doing? Well, it's getting the low. And then it's getting the last low. Okay. Let's go ahead and say DF res high equals, so that's re the high resistance, equals DF negative two high dot max. Perfect. So my goal here is to give you all of these functions because they're building blocks and then you can build absolutely anything you want. I believe code is a great equalizer. That's why I share this stuff. This stuff is so secretive. Nobody's sharing it with you. Nobody's telling you when they're moving to new exchanges. I'm telling you I'm moving to this exchange because I want to eliminate the risk that you're ignoring. You're ignoring the risk of waking up one day and your exchange is gone. Your money is gone. So make sure to get to a decentralized exchange. Of course, there's other options, but this one is the one I'm using. This is how I'm getting connected. I'm able to algo trade here pretty easily, and um, you're going to get access to it. You have a link below if you're quick. So Riz high and say Riz high one hour equals DF dot I lock negative one and then res high res high. And then we'll say SDDF for the one hour supply or demand zone actually equals between these two numbers. That's why we were doing all this. Sup low high, sup one hour. And then this one, the supply zone is in between these two numbers. So this is how I calculated the supply and demand zones. You can calculate it a different way, B. I just want to show you how to do it because if I can show you how to do it, then you can build anything. And I know you can build anything. I hope you know that too. You can do it. And then we'll say return SDDF. So, so far in this video, I just gave you some alpha. I showed you how to build supply and demand zones. Let's go ahead and say print. Here, uh, here are moon supply and demand zones. And then you can build absolutely anything off supply and demand zone. Let's print SDDF, okay? I'm not gonna put this anymore. I'm gonna mark out some of this stuff down here, the layer two stuff, okay? Um, what else do we want? What else do we want? This looks super sick to me. Limit by order place. Thanks, moon. Thanks, moon. Okay. What else do we want? Okay, I think we're Gucci. So I want to get out of this position. Well, it doesn't matter, but I'll show you how to do that regardless because I, I untriggered this or I unmarked it unmarked it out so reverse marked it out i lost eight cents on this video so i hope you're hitting the like button for me i'm giving you everything i'm giving you alpha and losing money for you nine cents now i hope you enjoy this i hope you build something so sick and then you let me know about it in discord that would be awesome i just want to hear about your wins man i know you can do this just get off of centralized exchanges ASAP. Let's go ahead and see if this supply and demand zone bot worked. Placing limit order. Hi, hi, hi. All right, it's out of the market, but where are my supply and demand zones? It's my fault. You know why it's my fault? Because I didn't ask for the supply and demand zones. 
You only get what you ask for in coding. It's always my fault. Supply and demand zones. Let's let's not go. Oh, heck, let's go short. Let's short this. Again, don't trade by hand because these are the types of things you do. You see a bar going down if you're a hand trader and you short it and then it goes up. If you're a hand trader, you see a bar going up, you long it and then it goes down. <laughs> Bro, you know your biggest risk right now. I can tell you, number one, you're using a centralized exchange. That's your biggest risk by far. Number two, which is really close to your number one risk, really big as well, is that you're trading by hand. You do things like chase bars, you FOMO, all that good stuff. So just to just to prove this, let's make a buy. I'm not I'm not gonna make any order. I don't care. I don't I don't care about making $17 orders right now. I just want to get you to a place that you can crush it. And here you go. Here's my supply and demand zones. So the demand zone is between these two numbers and the supply zone between these two numbers. But what what is this? CB symbol, get open, high, low, close volume. It's for injective. To be honest, this looks a little weird to me. Looks like we're getting some different data up in this B. Let's go ahead and debug this a little bit. First off, where is that print coming from? This is the supply and demand zone. Where is that big long print coming from? Oh, it's print open high, low, close volume. Don't want that. Get out of here, Felicia. Uh, what else don't we want? Let's go ahead and look at this again because to be honest, those didn't look too good to me. You see this between 0.18 and 0.66? What's going on? That's not right. Let's go ahead and see what's going on in here. Maybe I made an error. First off, let's go through step by step. And this will be a good little review anyways. Get open, high, low, close volume data. Okay, so we made a data frame. We get the open, high, low, close volume data. The time frame. What is the time frame? One hour. Okay, that's fine. The limit is the last 1,000. So 1,000 hours. Okay. I guess that's fine. Beautiful. Keep going, and boy. You start talking to yourself, saying, "Man, my, my knee is really sore right now." Maybe I'm Dang, it always silence. I like to listen to that whole thing, but for some reason, when I pick up my phone, it silences it. Let me know if you know why. Okay, so let's go ahead and print out this DF. Print DF. The air has to be coming from there, you know. The numbers just look a little, little, little bit off to me. Okay, here we go. Resistance, support, resistance. The heck is this? There's no opening at point nine. What symbol is this, B? I N J. Let's change this to Sol. What is going on here? That just looks weird to me. I feel like, because INJ is $16. And this one's $2. Oh my goodness, that's why. Look at this data, it's from 2020. Okay, so we got a buggy bug somewhere here. How are we getting 2020 data? 
What is a thousand hours, by the way? One thousand divided by twenty four is forty one days. One hour time frame. Why is this giving us data from 2020 is my question. Dang, you should have bought Solana in 2020 for $2. Duh. Okay, so we're going to say Coinbase symbol time frame. Let's say 15 minute and let's say let's say 100. No, let's say 1,000. So this should get the, oh, it's because of this maybe. Sorry, sorry, I got, I'm on the wrong one. We're gonna go down here. This should be time frame. Let's try 15 minute and let's do limits fine. Interesting. So somewhere along these lines, we switch this to get data from way long ago. That's quite weird. That's quite weird. I think it's this right here. Mark that out for now. Curious what I was doing there. 2020 still. Am I tripping? I'm tr I'm not tripping. It's 2023 now, right? Not 2020. Is this a? Are we? Are we in a simulation? Holy smokes. Okay, well, the good thing is, while I investigate this, whatever is going on, the good thing is that you can make an order. You can make order, you can get the ask bid, you can calculate the supply and demand zone. We just gotta get the right data in there now. So fetch open high, low, close volume. Let's see if we can use like Kraken. How about that? Crack. Yeah. See what their data looks like. Probably doesn't have the symbol. Huh. Okay. So I'm using Kraken data now, and we are Gucci. So the one hour supply zones are between 34 and 42 for Solana, and between 63 and 63.39 for. The supply zone. So now you can make supply and demand zones. Dog. It's pretty cool, right? Because now what can you do based off of this? Well, you could say, hey, I'm going to buy in demand zones and sell that position when it gets to the supply zone. If you want to see me build something like that, I can build something like that. I've built like built things like that a lot. So let's go ahead and change this bad boy to 15 minutes to get a little tighter supply and demand zones. This is super weird. So I'm using Kraken data now. That's fine. I don't care where the data is coming from. Just need to get a pretty good calculation of this. And you can see now the supply and demand zones for the one hour still. Oh, because I need to update this to show. Let's make this a little more dynamic so it doesn't say one hour. Um, how do we do this? Can we say something like this? Time frame. Does that work? Nah. It doesn't work. I think I'm just going to name this a little differently. Supply. Sup. 
resist okay sub resist okay uh, I'm gonna take supply low I just don't want it to to be um, I want to be more dynamic essentially because I think that's gonna throw us off a little bit if we if we don't and we can put this say time frame time frame one hour okay let's do the same thing here so this replaces the one hour with the whatever time frame we pass in okay now it shouldn't say anything about the one hour because we're passing in time frames like that okay how's that look limit sd limit i don't even need this stuff peace son so now we're passing in the symbol cb symbol i should call this something else nah that's good for now I, I i was using coinbase data so i used cb symbol but now it's cracking data as you can see this is the data and just here i'll give you two seconds to screenshot all this code in case you missed it earlier i'll also put it on my github here you go that's all the code Start screenshot one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, you got it. All right, here's another part of the code. Screenshot one, two, three, four. If you're screenshotting it, throw the like though. That's all I ask. If you're screenshotting, throw the like. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so we successfully did a ton today. You're able to get the ask and the bid prices, you're able to get the level two data, you're able to create orders. You can build anything you want now, dog. You can adjust the leverage, awesome, perfect. You can get open, high, low, close volume data, and then you can build supply and demand zones. And let's go ahead and just look at them, see if they got dynamic, uh, the update that we asked for. Yep, you can see now it says 15 minute demand zone because I went down here and I said time frame is 15 minutes. So now I pass that in and it's gonna change it. So what if I change this to uh, something else? Like I could change it to four hours or something, four hour. Guess what's gonna happen? The demand zone should change. Bro, bro, you weren't supposed to fail? Come on, doggy. All right, let's try it one more time. There we go. So you can see it's a four hour demand zones now. Dang. And then you can change the limit as well. So if I want it to be a little tighter, instead of the 400, 1,000 hours, maybe I only want the demand zones for the last 20 times four. So 100 hours. Oh my God. See, you, you don't even have to know how to do math. 20 times four is 100, you idiot. Oh my goodness. You can see for the last 20 times four hours. <laughs> I like the half the reason I make these videos is to show you I'm an idiot and that you can do this too and you can do this much better than I can I was able to figure out how to code and automate my entire portfolio of trading uh, I know you can do this as well I have that $200 USDC giveaway going on as well so if you subscribe and leave a comment tell me what you're working on I will uh, give you a chance to win that and uh, also a chance to join my boot camp where I show you how to algo trade. But, you know, I highly recommend you get off of centralized exchanges. Grab the link below if it's still available. And other than that, I will catch you in the next video. If you want to see more of this hyper liquid stuff, just let me know. Peace.